welcome, I'm Antony Nantosh and you are watching Head to Head with UATV. After the USSR collapsed in 1991, each of 15 republics that emerged on its ruins gained their own independence and started their own paths towards the future. And though these paths were different, the obstacles and the challenges of the road proved to be somewhat similar to for many of post-Soviet countries. Let's take Ukraine, Georgia and Moldova, for example. All three of the countries had to deal with poverty, corruption and, in addition, with open Russian aggression. Exploring similarities and differences between these three countries is a main goal of the Neighbors Project. And to talk more about this, we welcome to our studio today Oleksiy Soldatov. He's a coordinator of the project. Hello and thank you for coming. Hello. Thank you. So tell us all about the project, which is named The Neighbors. Okay, uh, it's an international project, multimedia project, uh, which includes uh, Georgia, Moldova and Ukraine, as you have said already. And it uh, is aimed to tell similar stories, um, stories about similar problems and um, uh, some unique experience that each of these countries has. I think it's a unique project. Um, it uh, has a unique content because uh, it was a surprise for me, but uh, each country has quite an isolated uh, media environment. All of us are interested in our own problems. And uh, sometimes we are facing the problems which are similar to our neighbors. And uh, this project is a great opportunity to uh, find similar problems, find some uh, possible solutions and to exchange a, a unique experience which uh, each country has. If we are talking about Georgia, Moldova mm -hmm. and Ukraine, and our project is not just about problems, it's about successful stories also. That's good. Yeah, I think so also. And we have six topics, but uh, much more stories. We have 18 stories. Uh, uh, and uh, we have six topics. Uh, propaganda, alternative energy, uh, urbanism or city development, uh, oligarchy and corruption, uh, occupied territories and... Uh, Wine making. Mm. Yeah. So there are a lot of interesting stories we have uh, on okay, our so website. Okay, so why uh, Ukraine, Moldova and Georgia? Is it because all of the three countries have, on some point of their uh, development of their history, have experienced uh, occupation from Russia? Uh, yes, but uh, not just because of occupation. Uh, we have much more similar problems than just an occupation. We, like what? Uh, like uh, facing propaganda, uh, like uh, mm, uh, post-Soviet city development, mm. uh, like winemaking. Okay. And uh, we, all of uh, our countries, uh, all of these countries are trying to develop alternative energy mm -hmm. uh, recently. So uh, I think it's all right, useful. So in terms of tackling propaganda, is Ukraine similar in what our government is doing to those two other countries, meaning Moldova and Georgia, or we could actually take something, take some experience from Georgia and Moldova? Uh, maybe it's a kind of a surprise for us uh, and for you, but Ukraine is the most successful country facing propaganda, mm. if we are talking about our project, mm -hmm. because uh, uh, no... Uh, Moldova and Georgia uh, don't have uh, a strategic plan uh, how to counter propaganda. They uh, haven't implemented uh, uh, any program program mm -hmm. to face propaganda. Mm -hmm. um, but Ukraine, as you know, we have uh, banned uh, Russian television, Russian TV channels. Uh, we have uh, banned uh, some persons to enter yeah. our country and uh, imposed sanctions mm -hmm. recently. So uh, we are. Mm, quite ahead of these uh, neighbor countries. So, tell us about the city development. Uh, it's what is similar? Similar among three of those countries. Uh, our project uh, told uh, s stories about Kiev, Tbilisi, and Chisinau, and uh, all of these three cities uh, have problems. Uh, have problems uh, of transport development. Mm. Uh, all all mm -hmm. of these cities have minibuses, a lot of minibuses, uh, which are mm, mm, provided by private, private companies. Which are not actually a part of civil transportation system. Yeah, uh, and as, uh, as uh, experts in uh, Georgia and Moldova say, they are not uh, public transport, they are commercial transport, yeah. and they have 
quite different uh, aims and uh, objectives. That mm -hmm. is why mm -hmm. there are a lot of problems. They are not good enough, not safe enough. Uh, but if so. we do eliminate those l little mini shuttle buses, what do we change them with? Uh, they should be changed by public transport, uh, but this transport should be new, safe mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, eco-friendly. So mm -hmm. uh, it should be uh, some kind of program. So we, uh, as for now, Kyiv is uh, not capable uh, just to uh, stop using minibuses. Mm -hmm. We will have transport collapse, some kind of it. But uh, mm -hmm. we need to think about it and to make some steps to move towards it. Okay, is Kyiv more successful in renewable energy sources? Uh, uh, this topic was not just about Kyiv. This topic was uh, about Ukraine, uh, Georgia in general? in general, yes. And, okay, uh, is Ukraine more successful in developing the alternative sources of energy? Uh, I can say that in Ukraine mm, there, are, there is a very uh, good feed-in tariff. Mm. for uh, installing uh, alternative energy sources mm -hmm. and, uh, for example, photovoltaic panels. Uh, so there are no uh, such a tariff in Moldova, for example. So it's not uh, so good for people in, Mo in Moldova to install uh, some uh, uh, photovoltaic uh, panels uh, or uh, wind generators. Mm -hmm. In Ukraine it's much more profitable and uh, it's uh, our success, I think. Uh, but there are a lot of good stories in Georgia, in Moldova and in Ukraine, which we can share between us to use uh, them and to implement some kind of modification in our country. Uh, for example, in Moldova, uh, alternative energy is actively developed in monasteries by churches. Uh, really? So, yeah, <laughs> there are a, lot, uh, a monastery uh, in Moldova which have installed uh, 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 solar solar panel, panel mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, uh, biogas installation. Mm -hmm. So they just supply it, uh, try to use alternative sources as much as they can. Uh, Is it working? Uh, yes, yes, okay. it's working, and it provides uh, uh, some um, other good. Uh, profits, for example, they can utilize uh, their wastes in an eco-friendly way yeah. because uh, they had no opportunity to utilize them before uh, in a proper way. Mm -hmm. They had problems with uh, pollution mm -hmm. uh, of the ground. And now they are just using this um, uh, biomass uh, yeah. to produce energy and okay. to apply them on fields. That that is impressive. Let's move to to the, the, the most pleasant part of your project is winemaking. Uh, I'm guessing Ukraine is not as successful among the three countries that take part in your project in winemaking, but we do have an opportunity to learn from Georgia. For sure, you're right. Um, and we should, I, I believe we should uh, learn from Georgia and from Moldova because uh, both of these countries, uh, they uh, have... Uh, substantially improve the quality of their wine. Mm -hmm. They have uh, governmental support of winemaking. Uh, they have uh, much more uh, well-developed strategy. They have a unified brand mm -hmm. of their wines. Mm -hmm. For example, wines of Mo Moldova, they are, uh, are sold uh, using the brand wine of Moldova. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, Ukraine, um, Faces. How does the structure look in Ukraine? I'm guessing government does not support the winemaking industry. Uh, it's not true, but we have much more problems and we, we have some legislative obstacles be because okay. uh, small winemakers have a lot of troubles. Uh, they have a complicated procedure uh, to produce wine legally. Uh, they have to pay uh, a considerable uh, amount of money mm. uh, to obtain a license. Uh, uh, so there are, uh, but uh, the committee uh, of the Ukrainian Parliament uh, and uh, Department of the Ministry of Agrarian Policy, they are trying to improve the situation. They are development, uh, develop, uh, they are developing amendments, uh, legislative amendments, uh, to improve the situation and to support small winemakers. When did the project start existing? Uh, it started uh, operating a year ago, but... Oh, uh, just a year ago, so yes, it's relatively uh, young. For sure, and uh, it started publishing its stories in the end of the previous year, so we have just 
started, I think. <laughs> okay, but do you have a feedback so far? Uh, do sure. you have developments or improvements in any kind of those six sectors you named at the beginning of the interview? Uh, Frankly speaking, I <laughs> had no opportunity to uh, look for improvements in each uh, of these sectors, but I, we have a lot of different comments. Uh, uh, some stories are more popular in specific country. For example, mm -hmm. stories about oligarchs are much more popular in Moldova. Uh -huh. uh, because they have specific situation, I think. Uh, but... Uh, uh, in Ukraine, stories about propaganda are very um, uh, people are very interested about this in these stories. So uh, I hope we will have much more improvements in these sectors, and I hope our project will help to do it. Let's hope so. Thank you so much for coming and sharing this with us. Thank you. That was Oleksiy Soldatov. He's a coordinator of the Neighbors Project. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more.